Okay, uh, we're in the low part of the landscape here at Strathbogie. We've come off the slope about down about 250 metres down the hill um, from a rocky outcrop on the top of the rise. We've moved down into uh, into the sort of semi-depression. It looks like an old depression, could have been a swamp sort of situation. Um, it's a little bit different to the previous site that we described over the other side. Uh, there's water in the profile, which is uh, a bit of a surprise, but given, but given that we've got a dam just nearby, um, there's possibly a bit of mounding from um, that back upstream. Uh, although when you look at the soil, you'd expect that there is some sort of uh, a little bit of uh, um, potential for a depth. Um, the farmer described us that, that, that the uh, another couple of feet down there is quite a, a sticky uh, grey clay that uh, might be the reason for this. This soil is, uh, when I first came here, we are sort of expecting to see a, a, almost a duplex soil, but looking at this, um, the top soil to the really to the top of the, a, top of the bottom of the A is about here, moving into the B horizon. And uh, this was what we described as a light clay, um, and moving into a sort of slightly more medium clay as we went to depth, and it was very good. Um, you could ribbon it out very clearly. Um, not a lot of contrast between the upper profile and the B horizon. So it had good, there wasn't a lot of grit, there was, a, there was grit but there wasn't any large pieces of quartz or leftover minerals in the, in the soil that we noticed um, going through the exercise. You can see there is quite uh, reasonable good root development down, right down, down to the water line even, there is root development here but some of those roots uh, might have been associated with the, uh, the rushes that are growing nearby here, whether it's associated with the, the current um, um, pasture mix here, I suspect not and possibly it might be relating to the fact that there's a bit of native vegetation here. The, the, you can see the roots that are growing down through here. The, the, in terms of its uh, friability, uh, we, we, when we dug it out, it's fairly friable and uh, the, we walked over to this uh, section here which we which we took out and we and we just loosely sort of shook it so that you can see that there's fairly good aggregate sort of structure in that this is a, a section of the the a horizon and the, the top of the b and this is the b horizon so there's not there's a little bit of color change and it, it really doesn't look what i would consider to be typical of a granite soil as we looked at the other side the topsoil here, moving to the the top of the B, you can see we've gone into a sort of a yellowy sort of colour um, from a texture, from a colour point of view. Uh, so it's not a big change in terms of uh, associated with that. In terms of the uh, aggregates, we we tried out a um, we put some topsoil in this this jar here, and the aggregates have largely just stayed together. It's just sort of sat there and really not done a lot. In terms of the, the B horizon, it's a little bit milky, but I think it's been just uh, been shaken up a little bit, but the, the aggregates have fallen apart. Even when we stirred up this water earlier on uh, to see what had happened, um, it started to go back to uh, into its natural state of being quite... If you stir it up, um, it goes into solution. But it doesn't stay very long. It sort of it sort of starts to stream out, and eventually it'll just drop out. Looks very similar to what you'd see in a really salty situation, but it's not. It's very low in um, sodium. In terms of uh, pH for this site, um, when the group did the test on the pH for here, um, we're expecting a little bit lower, but it was around about 5.5. One one small group got to the point of being what they thought was a six but probably in the overall context five and a half to about here and the same in the subsoil in the B horizon um, very much hardly any difference at all and at that sort of level you would not expect much of a impediment to uh, to growth talked about the water before um, uh, to be mounted here there's 
it's obviously reflected in the colour that you're seeing in this in this material here. It's a there's a little bit of mottling, but not substantial enough to be significant. Uh, it's more of a grey colour. So in terms of its uh, difference between the other side, the other side is obviously better drained, and uh, to a degree that it's, uh, it's freely draining. In terms of uh, we talked about texture before. Uh, we did it. We did a texture test on this material before, and you can obviously ribbon it out, and uh, it sort of goes. If I get it right, oops, a bit more water. But we can certainly start to. You can push it out into a neat little thread. A bit more water. It gets quite sticky, so it's got, it's got a reasonable amount of it's quite a heavy clay. There's a bit of oh, I thought it was a bit of grit, but there's no obvious uh, quartz or other rock material in this at, down at 50, 60 centimetres, which is surprising. So I suppose I was just sort of looking at the unused roadside uh, just below the site here, and it shows us, um, some key indicator species that might reflect the. Um, the water in the profile here, you've got uh, swamp gums, which are the tree species uh, growing, um, growing just in front of us. You've also got um, one of the thatch or sore sedges, Garnia, which is um, uh, also growing in, the, in this sort of drainage line or this part of the landscape, which is a good indicator of uh, wet areas. And uh, yeah, there also seems to be um, some shrubs they might be tea trees which is a, another good indicator and they're sort of confined just to this area um, where we've where the lower soil pits so it, it reflects and associates quite well with the soil uh, with what the soils been described as